This is Damon L. Jacobs, and I'm here with Nelson Aspen, <laughs> international entertainment reporter and, once again, new author. I know. I just keep cranking out all these books. I How do you do all this work? I just hope someone will buy them. And <laughs> I'm shamelessly hawking dinner at Nelson's. There you go. Um, they were, it was uh, an Australian editor. And interestingly, I had an Australian book tour that was wildly successful and lots of fun. And in America so far, we're not getting it into the bookstores yet. It should be this summer. But it's available at huge discounts on Amazon, which makes me really excited. Um, huge discounts at Amazon, although it's incorrectly listed as a paperback. And I mean... It's a really beautiful hard you, you could. It's called Dinner at Nelson's, and you can cook and then work out with this book because there's a lot of weight here. But let's talk about what's inside the book because I was just looking at it, and I've got to tell you, stars. I, I'm I so mean, hungry right now. Well, certain soap we stars love, make me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> but the pictures in your book of the food are actually making me very hungry right now. Let's talk about the book and what what you're doing here. What is in this book? And, and show us some of these beautiful pictures of the food. I don't think you've ever seen food, food look this beautiful. Before. The food photography is quite amazing. It, do, it doesn't look like that when I make it. But, uh, <laughs> oh, let, my God. Okay. Just let me tell you. I mean, they, they just did a, amazing. an amazing job. I'm and so hungry. They so. had asked me. <laughs> cookbooks sell well. Uh, and I had been asked to do a cookbook. And I felt like, you know what? I burned myself out doing a cookbook before. I don't even enjoy cooking much anymore after that experience. And people have these unrealis unrealistic expectations. I thought, let me, let me sit on this and figure out what the book will be. And I thought, you know what? Um, I was flying back from New York to Los Angeles and planning a dinner party. And I was making a little list who I would invite. And then I was making a list of what I would serve. And I thought, oh, I've got really cool celebrity friends. Oh, I've got really cool <laughs> recipes. And I thought, well, there's the book. So it's 13 full dinner party menus from soup to nuts with wine suggestions and pairings and things like that. And then each chapter features actual friends that I would have over for dinner from the world of entertainment. So you get the cuisine and the conversation. So if you're interested in cooking, there are recipes you can, you know, that will challenge you. And if you're interested in just showbiz stuff, there are interviews in there that are fun to read. Or it can just be a very pretty coffee table <laughs> book to, to share or give. Now, if someone is not an expert cook, like myself, um, would I be able to follow a recipe in there? Absolutely. All of them except for two chapters. Okay. Um, the, the 11 chapters that I prepared uh, food-wise, you would be able to follow because I'm a humble she a cook. I'm not a chef. Uh, then I had two guest uh, chefs uh, uh -huh. contribute chapters, Amy Casali, who is a very uh, talented Italian chef, and then Bill Telepan, who owns the Telepan restaurant on 68th Street, uh, 69th oh. Street uh, in New York City on Columbus Avenue. And the food, those, if you want the challenge, if you're into the challenge, uh, Bill and Amy will provide that. So all levels of culinary skill here. You don't have to be an expert chef to, to, to do this, to appreciate And this. the guest list, I, I, I yeah, really... Yeah, let's talk about the guests. I didn't want it just to be a knockout of, of, of a bunch of celebrities. I want the real scoop. And sometimes celebrities are so guarded, they won't give you the real dirt. So I have a very eclectic guest list, uh, the agents and managers of the stars. So may, not some names you may recognize. Uh, Gloria Allred, we all know Gloria Allred, uh -huh. the pit bull attorney, pit bull and pumps, uh, you know, the, the great uh, feminist attorney. She's a pal. Uh, she offers a very unique perspective. My veterinarian, who is also Lassie's veterinarian, so the vet to the stars. You've got personal trainers. You've got sports stars like Dean Karnazes and Catherine Switzer from the world of marathoning, um, you, just this this wild collection, casting directors, uh, but, news journalists. And you also got a lot of soap stars in there who we love, including, let's just start, James and Cassie DePaiva from One Life to Live. Who are awesome, who I met. Uh, I worked with Jim DePaiva 100 years ago on One Life to Live, <laughs> and he taught me the secret to acting. Uh, the, the best acting advice I ever got is if you don't know how to end a scene, and it just it's kind of vague on the script page, uh, you know, just uh, on Max. And Max doesn't you know necessarily what emotion he's out to, to, to convey, and he'd say, well, just act like you smell something bad. And it works for, and <laughs> just try it, try it. That could be smoldering uh, romance. It uh -huh. could be confusion, anger, bewilderment, forlorn, you know. 
I, I learned that from Jim DePiva. And then I ran into him in a restaurant and met Cassie finally. And so there and there, Marsha McCabe, who is yeah. a dear lifelong friend of mine, Search for Tomorrow, All yes. My Children, Another World, etc. Uh, married to Chris Galtman. She's in the book. Luann Gideon from Search for Tomorrow. Louise Schaefer from Ryan's Hope and hey. Search for Tomorrow. Uh, Tom Racina. Edge of, Night. Edge of Night. Tom Racina, who, of course, wrote, uh, you know, General Hospital. Luke and Laura, notoriety. General Hospital, Hope and Bo, Days of Our Lives. Oh, my gosh. Who else? Um, uh, other soap stars. Uh, Sherry Stringfield, oh, who, yes. you know, of course, now is has most famous for ER, but she was Blake on uh, Guiding Light. Light. Uh, if that. you consider Desperate Housewives a soap, we've yes, got James we Denton and, uh, you know, the hunky plumber, Mike the Plumber, and Catherine Juston. I told you I was getting hungry. I was serious. <laughs> you say James Denton. Okay. So yeah, Anyways. so yeah, it's it's a very eclectic <laughs> mix of people, even former child stars like Allison Arndt, yeah. Mindy Cohn. You take the good, you take the bad. bad. You take them both. You got Natalie. The only Facts of Life character to ever have sex, strangely enough, was was Natalie on Facts of Life, and now she's cooking with you. I'm not sure that is, is that really that true. Is, she's you the look only it up, one, the only character on Facts of Life. Okay, I think that Mrs. they talked about. Mrs. Garrett was a dark horse, though. So, well, she was a wild cat. <laughs> <laughs> she was a Mrs. She didn't do it out of wedlock, right? <laughs> um, what kind of foods did, did Alice and Arna Graham from uh, Nellie Olson from Little House on the Prairie? Gosh. What did you cook together? What did what is uh, you know what Allison and I had a tea party when John Kerry lost the presidential election and we called it Tea and Sympathy because we were so <laughs> devastated that he didn't win. Oh, we when uh, with Mindy and Allison we did a Chinese banquet. So there's hot wow. and sour soup, chicken fried rice, pepper wow. steak, uh, cold sesame noodles, and quick and easy almond cookies. And again, these are recipes <laughs> that even people like myself who aren't really comfortable in the kitchen where especially I can read this and I can people, follow this. Especially people okay. like um, On a more serious note, you know, since we last talked, there's been two devastating cancellations on All My Children, One Life to Live. It, it, the, the four shows that are left are, are somewhat tenuous what's going to happen. You've been working in this field and you've been seeing the goings on in this field for most of the past 30 years. What do you see? Ha- I'm sorry. Well, you said you and James DePiper worked 100 <laughs> years ago, so I was trying to be generous. What do you see happening with daytime and, and do you have any hope for, for network daytime television? Well, I, my hope is that it will adapt and morph into, into the next version. It uh, doesn't mean that I'll be a fan, <laughs> but th- maybe I will. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I'd like to believe that I can change with the times. It's hard. And the older we get, the more resistant to change we are. The only silver lining about All My Children um, and One Life to Live was for, when I heard the news, it's like, gosh, I wasn't working on these shows at the time they were canceled. I'm not the jinx that I thought I was when Search for Tomorrow was yeah. canceled. Uh, and, uh, you know. Yeah, there was a rumor going around about you there. At the, uh, yeah. it, I mean, it's just. I went through a phase where, you know, gosh, I worked at Loving, and oh, I worked at Another World, and I thought, well, I briefly worked at One Life to Live, so uh, maybe maybe it was just somehow my fault. But no, it it breaks my heart. The, the whole loss from New York City drives yeah. me crazy. Yeah. And then, you know, Young and the Restless ain't what it used to be. Days of our lives. I mean, what are they thinking getting rid of Crystal? Uh, that befuddles me. These are the kinds of decisions, but I'm not an executive, so what do I know? Um, I don't pretend to be smarter or dumber than an executive, but I don't have the power to flip the switch. I just have the power to voice my opinion and tune in when I can and support when I can. Do you think given the changing taste in daytime landscapes, do you think there'll be a time when the continuing fictional story will come back to daytime in a, in a different way than we have known it so far? Yeah, I think it will because there are so many channels and so many hours in a day to fill with content. And if you look, you know, I, I love my two favorite shows are Mad Men and Glee. Yeah, I'm talking about primetime shows. And they're both soap operas. Right. Uh, so why not? And, and we talk about Desperate Housewives. And they're wildly popular. These are two of the highest rated shows. You know, yeah. so I, I, it's not the end of, of continuing drama mm-hmm. storytelling. Uh, you know, here we come, we're going we're gonna to get Dallas back. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. The, the, the genre isn't gone. Uh, the format for daytime is gone. But yeah, well, I think we'll see it back. You know, the life after Oprah, we just can't have local news and, and, and lame, talk shows all the time. Lame cooking shows. Hey, I'd love to be on a lame <laughs> cooking show. <laughs> I mean, The Chew. Maybe I could get on The Chew. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot of great cooking shows out there, and there's so many, and that's why I don't think we really need another one. But in terms of cooking... <laughs> Unless I'm hosting. And, <laughs> that would be an awesome series. And I'd bring... Nelson Cooking with Nelson, the series... 
And we could do it out of the old One Life to Live studio and put all that crew back to work and bring that. in Cassie, Cassie and, Jim and James and, and everybody. And Robin Strasser, she's a great cook, and you and Robin could cook quite a lot, I'm sure. We, uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I don't know why I'm thinking of a Caco Vin with Dorian Lord. There's there you some, go. There's something about I, See? That's what I would make. We got the real chew for, for you here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nelson. Well, once again, Dinner with Nelson is available right now on Amazon. It's it's on sale at Amazon. Deep discount, 16-something. Yeah. You can't go wrong. So either as a Father's Day gift or a summer gift. There's some great summer recipes in there, some light summer fare. There's everything. There's everything in here you need. So get Dinner with Nelson's on Amazon, <laughs> right? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Nelson. Bye-bye.